Hi, this is Frank Taylor, Nature in Your Backyard. Today's episode is going to be about Dobson flies. And Dobson flies are the adult of the Helgramite that locally people know from the New River. I'm really, really excited about this because this is only the second time that I've ever get to hold a adult Dobson fly in my whole life. And so I'll explain what Dobson flies are, why are they special, why I'm so excited that I actually have one here and I can actually hold him. And I'll tell you the whole life story. So hang on, I'll be right back with the story of Dobson flies and Helgramites. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so first I gotta tell you, why am I so excited about having this adult insect in my possession right now? And I'm really gonna be really excited about getting him out and holding in my hand. First of all, these are very, very hard to find. And the reason for it is they're the adults of an organism called a Helgramite. And a lot of people who bass fish are very familiar with Helgramites because I've never met a smallmouth bass fisherman that didn't say that the very best bait for smallmouth is Helgramites. And I know Helgramites live in a new river. As larvae, they're about that big. They're dark. They have a bunch of protrusions from their long abdomen. They've got big jaws. And they're the top predator in the insect world in rivers. Helgramites will live one to three years in the river environment before they pupate to the adult stage. The adults, the females, live only two weeks and the males only live three days. So to see an adult Helgramite and to hold them in my hand is a really special thing. They're only alive for three days out of the year, and plus they're nocturnal, so they're only active at night. So most people don't see them. TJ Ratliff, one of my former students, and him and his dad own and operate and work at Todd's Jewelry on 114. For some reason, the Helgramites are attracted to the lights in that area, and they frequently find them on the walls of the building that's there on 114. And it's miles from the New River. I've read that the adults, while they're nocturnal, are very attracted to lights. And I saw the white siding. I saw the big street lights on that section of 114 and adjusted shopping area. And for some reason, they're attracted there. Let's take a look at an adult male Dobson fly, the adults of the larva we know as Helgramites. And I'll tell you why I know it's a male. Let's take a look. So here in my hand is an adult Dobson fly larva. I told you, I'd tell you how I knew he was a male, and I know he's a male by those giant jaws that almost look like tusks that he has right up front. And those are real jaws, and insects, they're known as mandibles, would be the correct term. While they look very menacing, they're very harmless. He doesn't have very strong jaws for it. Uh, so as an insect, of course, he has six legs and two antenna and two eyes, pairs of wings. And you can see that the wings, or maybe it's hard to see, the wings on this guy are much longer than his abdomen. I may try to turn him over a little bit. Can you see the base of his abdomen there? And you can see the wings move far, far behind that. Dobson flies are in the group known as megalopterans. Mega, I think you know that word, means big. And the scientific name megaloptera refers to big wings. And so they're quite aptly named for their big wings. The jaws on the male are used in the mating process. One of the articles I read about the mating behavior was that the males will use those jaws to t 
So, nature in your backyard has moved to my bathroom, which is now the smallest enclosed space in the house because this guy periodically decides he wants to go aerial and try to fly away before I got a chance to finish talking about him. So, the males use those big jaws, apparently, to grasp onto the female. And you can see that they're pretty clumsy flyers. The male will hold the female at a perpendicular or 90 degree angle, gently, and that's part of their mating ritual. You can see that he's got two pairs of wings that are deeply veined. Really not great flyers. Remember that the females can bite, the males cannot. This guy has suddenly become very active. And I think it may be because they're nocturnal. Really amazing. It's just a, an amazing thing to be able to hold one of these guys in my hand and watch him fly. Again, this is like the first time I've ever had a chance to see him. And this one, while big, is not as big as some of the other ones that are out there. Males and females are going to be looking for each other in order to mate. And then the females will lay eggs. The eggs are, or egg cases, are about that big. About two centimeters in diameter are laid on bridge abutments and rocks. And they look like little white circular patches. There's three levels of eggs, about a thousand eggs in each egg packet. And after the female lays these white eggs, she covers them with a clear secretion to protect them and kind of hold them together. After the eggs have incubated for a period of time, the larva will hatch from the eggs and drop into the river below. So the eggs are always laid above the river on bridge abutments, on trees. And a lot of times I'll see the egg cases year round because what's left looks almost like a barnacle, a white ring on those rocks. And the white rings are often in groups. So scientists think there's some chemical pheromone thing going on with the females and they're attracted to certain places and lay eggs in groups. The river's really high right now. So I'm not able to get a larval helgramite alive to show you. I'll be doing an episode later in the summer when river levels go down. And the helgramite larva will live one to three years in the water. They're the top predators in the water. They're ferocious predators. Both the males and females have powerful jaws and can pinch quite hard if you pick one up with your fingers. Smallmouth bass fishermen, swear by them, say that they're the best bait you could possibly have. After three years, usually when there's a thunderstorm and they think that these guys are coordinated by the sound of th the thunder, the larva will come out of the river at the same time. Usually in late May, they will emerge at the same time, usually during a thunderstorm. So scientists think that they're cued in by the, the, actually by the thunder, to move at the same time. And local residents call it the Helgramite Crawl because people that live near the river will see them migrate in mass up the bank, sometimes 40 to 45 feet. He's so much more active right now than he has been all day. And I think that's uh, because they are, in fact, nocturnal. You can see the two pairs of wings, or four wings total, each time he tries to fly. So when they pupate, they're in the they, they will pupate in a burrow that they've built in the ground. And so after about two weeks in the burrow, these adult helgramites will emerge from the burrow with their wings and the males with their, their big tusks, and they will fly away to find each other and mate and repeat the life cycle. The males will live only three days, and the females will live up to about two weeks. So we've just seen me wrangling the adult of Corydalis cornutus. That's its scientific name, Corydalis cornutus. 
and they're in the or insect order called Megalopteran. Mega meaning big and referring to the big wings on these guys. And you could see that the wings were much longer than his body. I had trouble concentrating, watching him, chasing him around inside the house so that I could get some good footage for him. But just to review, these organisms are, are considered uh, aquatic as their larva. Their eggs are laid on bridge abutments. They're about two centimeters in diameter, about that big. They're white. If you're in a canoe or a kayak and going underneath a river, look for the egg cases if it's about this time of the year, or look for what look almost like white barnacles. So it'll be little white rings uh, in large patches on rocks or bridge abutments. And those are the egg cases of the Dobson fly. The young hatch out of, from those eggs and drop straight down into the river. And they'll live as aquatic predators in the river for up to three years. They will emerge synchronously from the river, walk up the banks up to 50 feet from the river, where they'll find a spot to burrow in the ground. They'll burrow in the ground, form a pupa, and in two to four weeks, also synchronously, they'll emerge from their pupal state as the winged adult, like the male that you saw. The males are recognized by those big, big jaws, which they use in reproduction. And the females have smaller jaws and they can bite. So don't handle a female like I was, because they're likely to be able to even draw blood. Males will live three days, and that's why I'm so excited, because I've never found one. Females will live two weeks. They're both nocturnal, and so they're, they're rarely seen. A place to go would be lights near the river. So these were found quite some distance from the river. So tomorrow I'm going to return the adult to where I found him and release him. And hopefully he'll be able to find some females and mate and the life cycle will continue. Thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. This has been Frank Taylor, the Dobson Fly adult, a male. And it's awesome to be able to hold it for only the second time in my life. Have a great day. Oh,